through the looking glass through the looking glass I'm going to give you some intro our text will be in 1st Corinthians 13 but to begin with just to lay the groundwork I'm going to give you some information from another book so you you can hold your place there or turn here it's up to you mark 12 verse 30 the Bible says this Jesus speaking and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength this is an odd list you know unless you think about it you don't realize it that's an odd list usually these lists are three things this is four things the heart the soul the mind and the strength so you can try to identify what those things are he says this is the first commandment in Matthew 13 15 he says this for this people's heart is waxed gross and their ears are dull of hearing their eyes have they closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart understandings in the heart not the head and should be converted and I should heal them so the heart and the mind are not the same according to God spiritual understanding is in the heart determination patience and hope those are of the mind you control those now we're in first Corinthians first Corinthians chapter 13 look at verse 9 we're still working our way toward the text I'll tell you when we get there <laughs> first Corinthians 13 verse 9 for we know in part and we prophesy in part so basically he just said you're not going to ever have all spiritual understanding I know that comes as a shock to you <laughs> you don't know it all <laughs> now when you first get saved after about three years you think you do <laughs> you think you've mastered this thing this is easy and then you do a little bit of reading and a little bit of studying and God says well what about that over there and that doesn't make any sense does it if that's not enough for you life starts not making sense you start seeing things happen and you think why would he allow that why did he allow that to me it gets personal and you don't have the answers you're not supposed to we know in part we prophesy in part verse 12 this is our text for now we see through a glass darkly but then face to face now I know in part and then shall I know even as I am known modern man is tempted to design intellectual scientific completeness in order to fill in the gaps of what he does not know hence evolution because man wants to make sense in his little pea brain out of the things he's not supposed to know God says you're not gonna know it all I've got a much bigger brain than you you can't handle it <laughs> the Bible is fact and that many times proves to be in your own life more superior than what you thought as humans our reasoning ability falls short many times most of the time and Daniel he says this and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing this is from God's point of view and he doth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth and none can uh, stay his hand or say unto him what doest thou so when life starts to not make sense don't question God that's tempting to do now it's not so tempting to do when we see it in somebody else's life <laughs> we're okay with that when it happens in your life this is the proper response God you do whatever you want I know you're running heaven and earth according to that verse right there and the inhabitants of the earth in Romans chapter 11 Romans 11 verse 33 here's the proper response Romans 11 verse 33 he says oh the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out doesn't mean you shouldn't try but he's saying when you get down to the end of it you'll end up saying I've not plumbed the depth yet verse 34 for who hath known the mind of the Lord or who hath been his counselor <laughs> nobody he counsels himself if you think you know it all you don't know all the questions yet <laughs> that's a fact 
the older I get and the more I learn, the more I realize there's so much I don't know. <laughs> and the Bible is a book that is intended to grow with you. If you could master it in a few years, you'd put it on the shelf and it'd be boring to you. But God puts things in there that you can't figure out so that you'll have something to do. <laughs> in verse 11, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 11, he says, When I was a child, I spake as a child. The problem is we got too many adults speaking as children. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. What are these childish things he put away? What, according to the next verse, he put away feeling like he could master everything. Hmm, don't think about that often, do we? It's childish to think that you got all the answers. And it's also childish to think God demands, uh, or can be demanded to give you every answer. He's not going to. You're going to see through a glass darkly. Now what's, What's fogging up the glass? What's the problem? The problem is this earth. The problem is this flesh in our mind. One day it'll be cleared up, but not till we get out of this place. <laughs> Soon that'll be, I think. We're to try, uh, my question is this, what are we trying to see? He says we see through the glass darkly. What are you looking at? Okay. He's gotta be looking at something that's not on this earth. I'm gonna tell you, I don't often do this, but I'll, I'll do it for fun now. The Revised Standard Version does something with this verse. They say, and all the commentators want to use it. I don't know. I went through probably 10 commentators on this verse. And they've all changed the verse. And it's wicked the way they changed it. The Revised says this, For now we see in a mirror darkly. You see how wicked that is? That implies a clear reflection of man would be perfection. Oh, we're looking through. We don't want to see us. We want to see something much better. For now we see through a glass darkly. Very true. And it seems like at times it starts to clear up a little bit. And you get a better view. And then other times it's not so clear. But it's no excuse for cl closing your eyes and living in the fantasy of reality. That's what I call it. This world around us many times is just a fantasy. It's not reality. Reality is what God makes. When he decides to do something, that's real. It's the honor of a king to search out a manner. It's what the Old Testament says, what David said. So our job is to keep searching, to keep peering through that glass as much as we can. We should be trying to see the things beyond the scope of human sight. I know that's that's hard to do because we got to use human sight all the time <laughs> but we can't depend on it there's got to be something much bigger and much better look at the next book over 2nd Corinthians 4 2nd Corinthians 4 verse 18 now that you're aware of this as you go through your Bible you'll see it pop up all through the Bible the whole Bible is about Close your eyes to life and look at something you can't see. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 4, verse 18. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Really, how are you looking at that? <laughs> he said, that's what we're doing. That is your focus. The, the point of life is not in this physical that we can see. For the things which are seen are temporal. Isn't that a fact? Anything you got's gonna fall apart much faster. Well, no, it's gonna it's gonna last for one day past the warranty. <laughs> then it's gonna self-destruct. <laughs> it's temporal. He says, but the things which are not, that is seen, uh, are eternal. That is, you can't put your eyes on something because man's not made it that's going to last forever. Your soul, for instance, I can't see your soul gonna last forever your spirit I can't see it it's gonna last forever but it's there look at verse 13 first Corinthians oh, I, I switch books on you first Corinthians 13 13 you know this is gonna be a good one double 13 first Corinthians 13 13 now this is the charity chapter everybody wants to call it the love chapter and 
of course you can't have charity without love but you could have love without charity <laughs> think about that for a while <laughs> he says now abideth faith hope charity these three but the greatest of these is charity okay so he's told us in context he's told us this you're going to look at things that you can't really see you're not going to really be able to get a whole grasp on it uh, but keep looking he says but here's three things that remain these three things you cannot see you can't see faith you can't see hope and you can't see charity you can see the result of them but you can't see the essence of them now many times those things can be faked now because this is a supernatural spiritual asset something that can't be seen it can easily be lost if you're not focused on it the first one we see is faith look at Luke chapter 18 Luke 18 verse 15 this is the story of the sower and the seed Jesus gives the interpretation Luke 8 15 but that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart having heard the word keep it and bring forth fruit I wish it ended there and bring forth fruit with patience <laughs> this whole life you're going to find if you're gonna see the unseen it's going to require patience mm -hmm. and a whole lot of it I don't like waiting on nothing <laughs> because I'm an American <laughs> you know we all think it's a Burger King mentality but life is not about getting what you want immediately it's about patience in Luke chapter 22 look at verse 32 Luke 22 32 Jesus speaking to Peter he says but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen thy brethren you can lose faith mm -hmm. now you're not going to lose salvation mm -hmm. you didn't do anything for that but you could lose faith many times we do we lose faith in the promises when you're going through life if you don't apply the promises you know from God's word to your life you lost faith in it Whew, that's a tough one the next thing we see is hope hope Romans chapter 8 Romans 8 verse 25 Romans 8 25 but if we hope for that we see not then do we with that word I don't like patience wait for it okay this patience and waiting is for something you expect not it's up in the air it may or may not happen no you know it's gonna happen he says with patience wait for it that's hope hope is expecting a good end if you're a Christian you expect a good end don't you and hopefully real soon <laughs> Titus Titus chapter 2 Titus 2 verse 12 Here's what you can do as you're in the waiting room. You know, you go to a doctor's waiting room or any waiting room. I had to take Amy to the doctor. What day was that? Friday or something? She had to get a, she had a um, retina lining, had a hole in it. And so they laser stitched it. So we had to wait in this waiting room. And I was prepared to wait there all day. And it feels like it, but it was only about 10 minutes. They were moving because it was Friday they want it out of there <laughs> but usually you go in the waiting room and to pacify you they put magazines on this coffee table that nobody wants to read but then they feel like they've done their part that's the old days nowadays it's a TV every corner is stuffed with a TV with something different on it and I don't want to see any of them <laughs> 
It's never something I'm interested in. <laughs> Titus chapter 2, look at verse 12. Teaching us that denying ungodliness. That's for Christians. You know, Christians have to deny ungodliness. Ungodliness will just creep up before you're looking. And worldly lust. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Okay, that's what you can do as you're patiently waiting for what you expect. And what's it going to do? It's going to produce hope. If you're doing that while you're waiting, it strengthens your hope. Look at verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope. As you do these things, as you proceed and you deny ungodliness and you start living righteously in this mess of a world we're in now, you start building your own hope for the next one to come. He says, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Look back at chapter 1 of this book, Titus 1. One of the things that gives us hope is knowing this isn't the end. <laughs> Titus 1 verse 2. He says, in hope of eternal life. That is, this life's moving on. We're going to drop this flesh. The shell's going to go down and we're going to get something much better. We're going to be clothed with something immortality is what he says. Verse 3, but hath in due times manifest his word through preaching. Now notice these two are tied together. Verse 2, in hope of eternal life, and he says that God that cannot, uh, that God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Okay, so you can have eternal life. And now what is he going to leave you in the meantime? So you can patiently wait. He's going to pacify you with not catalogs and TV screens. He's going to pacify you with this, his word. But hath in due times manifest his word through preaching. That is, make yourself available to preaching. Not that the preaching does anything in and of itself. I may be preaching one thing, and if you've got your Bible open, the word will manifest itself. Your eye will fall on a verse, and God will start talking to you. It may be a totally different message than I'm saying. But he said, this is the time I'm going to do it. If you will be submissive to listening to God's word in a public forum, God will manifest his word. He says, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. In 1 Peter, 1 Peter 1 verse 13, he says this, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. That is, you get busy and you have to do this. God's not going to do it for you. <laughs> you know, it would be nice if you got saved and then God just did everything for you. But that would be a welfare mentality. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> He'd just fix us up perfect and we have no problems and we'd be bored. <laughs> he says, you need to do some work yourself. Gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober. And here's our word, hope to the end. For the grace that is to be brought unto, unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. One day it's going to get clear. Right now it's not. It'll be too late for those who are not trying to peer through the, the glass now. The time to try to peer through the glass is now. When he shows up, it, he'll be revealed. Everybody will know it then. It's too late at that point. Look now and see what kind of glim glimpses you can get. In 1 Peter 1 verse 21 he says this, by, uh, Who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Your faith and your hope in this world has to be in God or you'll be disappointed. Oftentimes. If God's not the center of every thought, the end is disappointing. It really is. The next thing in our list was faith, hope, and charity. Charity. 1 Corinthians 8. 1 Corinthians 8. He said there's three things. Of the three things, this one is the most important. Charity. He says, verse 1. Now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. 
Okay, so charity is going to edify not only you, but everybody around you. He says we all have knowledge. But then in our text, he said we're not going to know it all. <laughs> so you have a limited amount of knowledge. Somebody else has a limited amount of knowledge. You get together and you can both share some of it. That's edifying. He says charity edifies. Because you're not doing it to belittle somebody. You're doing it to help somebody. And you're wanting to get some help too. Now if you think you got all the an answers, your edifying will come across as though you're belittling someone. You know it all and they don't. However, edifying says, hey, this is what I know. Let me, let me see your pieces to the puzzle. See if we can put them together. Now that's charity. Look at it in 2 Corinthians 5. First Corinthians 5 verse 15 we don't often think of it this way but charity should be an action done from you to God that's an odd one 2 Corinthians 5 15 and that he died for all that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died from uh, which died for them and rose again our life the only reason we have life is because he died spiritual life he says you're dead your life is hid in him okay so that life should be lived for him because he's the one who has it it's inside of him he says in first corinthians 8 but if any man love god the same is known of him your charity toward god is going to be seen by those around you you'll know it too many times i've been in I've been in a store, been in somewhere, and you can just tell the people that are saved. Something manifests. You can tell it. It clicks. If any man loves God, the same is known of him. It shows. That's something internal. But you know what? There's an effect that happens on this earth. It's supernatural. It's spiritual. They won't be able to see the real thing, but they should, should be able to see the effect of it. In 1 John 4, he says this, We love him because he first loved us. I don't know why, but he did. He first loved us. The, the real problem is this. He's loving losers. <laughs> you know what happens when you love losers? Usually you get hurt. <laughs> Try it. The losers usually don't respect it. The few Christians, the remnant that gets saved, are the exception to the rule and we've recognized hey he loved us we better try to reciprocate i think of hagar hagar's running out there in the wilderness and the angel shows up and shows her well where the well of water is now she recognized something he was watching out for me she says this have i here also looked after him that seeth me mm. That should be the question in everybody's mind as God begins to reveal himself. Is, hey, what have I done for him? True love always instigates a response of some kind. In verse 20 he says this, But if a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he's a liar. What a way to talk. <laughs> you liar. <laughs> for he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen... How can he love God whom he hath not seen? Uh-oh. So we can tell who's trying to peer through the looking glass or not by how they respond to other men. In conclusion, look at 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy 1 verse 5. He says, Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and faith unfeigned that is if you want to get down to the to the nitty gritty here's the conclusion to all of it you need to have charity out of a pure heart and a good conscience that's faith unfeigned there that's that faith that you could lose it's unfeigned but you could be feigning it you could be faking it many do look at the modern christian movement most of it's fake. <laughs> I mean, uh, not to be literal here, but that's the fact. <laughs> Most of it is put on. It's fake. He said faith should be unfeigned. 
in 2 Timothy 1 7 he says this for God hath not given us the spirit of fear but a power of love and of a sound mind many times the mind doesn't sound right does it <laughs> you got to tell the mind what to think the belief should be in the heart but the heart should tell the mind what to think I'll read you the lyrics to a to a song it says the other morning at sunrise when the mist is on the hills and all around I saw a beautiful gray-haired woman on the road as I drove into town well I pulled over and I asked her if I could give her a lift on her way she said no thank you I'm almost home now I'll be all right when the mist clears away now that's you and I we're almost home and there's plenty of mist that blocks our view <coughs> It goes on to say this, let the sunlight break through the darkness and let the night turn to beautiful day. Don't let the shadows turn into mountains. You'll be all right when the mist clears away. Sometimes we feel like we're not gonna be all right, but this ain't the end of the story. One day the glass is going to clear and we're gonna see straight through as he says, face to face. 